All right, our objective here is to talk about the mole and bring that back to the forefront, and then to begin talking about objective 4.2 and our goals within that objective. And so we'll start with that. Our objective 4.2 first goal is to convert chemical quantities using the mole. And we did this way back in objective 1.1, so this will be a review. We just have to bring it back and get some, some things back in our mind. So the first thing we want to talk about is what is the mole, practically. Well, a mole is a measure of quantity. And what I mean when I say that is that it allows me to count things, but not in the standard way. This would be like talking about cases of soda, where you know we may have 24 cans in a case of soda. The cans are the individual pieces, but we can buy them or, or ship them or sell them in cases that are collections of them. And so the mole is going to be a collective unit that we use in chemistry. The value of a mole is set to be equal to Avogadro's number, and Avogadro's number is numerically equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So while not a case of 24 cans, it's a much larger number than that, um, but that's the value that it entails. And we use it because we're dealing with things like atoms and molecules that are very, very tiny. Very small. And so that's why we use it. We have to get lots and lots and lots of them before we can even begin to work with them or measure them or do anything with them. All right, so before we begin this, I want to make a note to you. On page 303 of your textbook, this diagram that I'm going to draw for you is located there as well. So um, if for some reason you can't get it copied down while we're talking, you can go back to there. Now what I'm going to do is give you three different quantities that we use to measure moles in a practical sense. Really two of them are very lab practical and one of them is kind of theoretical. But there are three different ways that we can represent moles. And the first one we want to talk about is volume of gas at STP. And so we're going to be applying our rules of dimensional analysis here as well from way back in Unit 1. So if I have the volume of a gas at STP, if that's my known, and I want to move towards the known, or towards a mole, then I always put the unit and value of my known on the bottom of a fraction. So if I knew this to be one liter, for example, I would draw a bracket next to it where I would put 22.4 liters on the bottom and one mole on top. That is because that is the defined value for standard, which is what STP stands for, standard temperature and pressure. And these have very specifically defined values where my temp has to be 0 degrees Celsius or its Kelvin equivalent of 273 and my pressure has to be 1 atmosphere or its SI equivalent of 101.3 kilo pascals. And so I can have any mixture or match of those units but that has to be true and then if that's the case one mole of a gas, any gas, under those conditions occupies 22.4 liters. And so if I want to move the other way, move from moles to volume, the only difference is now I know the mole, so my mole will be on the bottom of my fraction, and the volume that I'm looking for will be on the top. Next potential measurement that's easier to make is mass in grams. Now technically this can be in kilos or milligrams or whatever you know you want to deal with, but I'm going to do my examples in grams. So let's say this time I start with a mole, and I want to move from the mole towards mass. So I know moles, so it goes on the bottom. And then I put this molar mass on top. And this molar mass is what comes from the periodic table. So we'll go and find the individual masses of the elements involved in the compound, or if it's a singular element, we just take its mass. And I'll place them there, because one mole will be worth that much mass. I'll do an example of this later when we work out a problem. Um, but just so you're aware, that's where it comes from. If we're moving in the other direction, say I start at mass and want to move towards moles, then we're going to do the opposite. We are going to take our mass this time, our molar mass, place it on the bottom, 
put the moles that we want to move to on top and go from there. The last leg of this triangle is the number of units or another way you'll see this termed if you look in your textbook is representative particles. And representative particles are things that we can count. So atoms, molecules, formula units, etc. And they're going to use the direct definition of a mole. So if I want to move from a mole to the number of representative particles that I have, I take those moles and write them down. And the bottom of my fraction, my conversion, I place a mole. And then I know how many things are in a mole. They're 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. This would be very similar to asking you uh, or telling you I have four cases of Dr. Pepper. How many cans do I have? You would do the same thing. You would do, oh, well, I have four, and there are 24 cans in a case. So I must have four times 24 cans. Well, it's the same thing with moles. We're just multiplying by a much larger number. Okay, next thing we got to do, if we want to move from representative particles back to the mole, we do something very similar, only this time my number of particles belongs on the bottom because it would be my known, and my mole would be on the top because it's where I want to move to. So just in case you haven't noticed, the mole is operating as a middle man in this case. Notice there is no root that can take me from here to there without passing through the mole. There's no direct root along this edge of the triangle either. It has to go into the mole and out of the mole. There's no connection between these two. It has to go into the mole and out of the mole. So whether or not, if we're doing one of these conversions, if we don't have a mole, the first thing we're going to do is convert to a mole. So just keep that in the back of your mind. If I have moles, fine. If I don't, that's where I'm going. All right, so here are some examples. If I want to know how many moles, so my question then is in moles, what do I get if I take this mass of a substance, CaCl2? So I want to go from mass to moles. And so first thing I'm going to need in going from mass to moles is that whole molar mass thing. And so I'm going to quickly show you how we calculate a molar mass. So the molar mass or something comes from the periodic table, and it comes from all the pieces that go into it. And so CaCl2 is made of one calcium, which is 1 times 40 grams. It also contains 2 times chlorine, which is 2 times 35 and a half grams. So if I take those two pieces and add them together, this makes 71, that makes 40, that's 111 grams. So that's what the mass of one mole of CaCl2 is. That's going to be important here in just a minute. First step of dimensional analysis, write down what's given to me. If I look up here in the problem, 125.3 grams is provided to me. Next step, draw a bracket and do conversion. So if I draw my bracket or fraction, I need to put the same units I have here, there, and according to what we just added up, 111 grams represent a mole of calcium chloride. And so I'll substitute those in appropriately. And notice that my grams of calcium chloride cancel out and move me into moles, which is what I want. So I've executed everything I need to do. Now I just need to report an answer. So we report the answer is 1.13 moles of calcium chloride. Next example, we want to know volume, what I get from 13.5 moles. So I want to move from moles to volume at STP. That's very important for what we're doing. So first thing I need to do is write down what I know. I know 13.5 moles of methane, CH4 and methane are the same thing. It's a gas and it's at STP. So that allows me to know 22.4 liters for every one mole no matter what the gas. As long as it's a gas at STP, that holds true. So now I draw my bracket, do my dimensional analysis. Moles of CH4 was here. Moles of CH4 belongs on the bottom. And like we just said, every one mole of CH4 holds 22.4 liters of space. So my moles of CH4 cancel out, leave me with liters. And 13.5 times 22.4 says that those 13 and a half moles represent 302 liters of methane at STP. Finally, we want to look at what number of iron atoms, so we're trying to find Fe atoms, are in 6.1 moles. So I want to go from moles to atoms, so moles to representative particles. So first thing I'm going to do is write down what I know, 6.5 moles of iron 3 oxide, 
draw bracket, do a conversion. For every one mole of iron three oxide, there is going to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd individual units of that. We call this formula units, so that's what that stands for. Now this doesn't answer the question. This tells me how many Fe203s I have, but doesn't tell me how many irons. And so my next bracket will take those formula units of Fe203 and recognize that there are two irons in every one. So we need to multiply this by two to get 7.8 times 10 to the 24th iron atoms present in 6.5 moles of iron 3 oxide. Again, dimensional analysis and using my definitions for my mole. All right, here are two more examples. In these cases, we're not moving from to, to the mole um, only. We're moving from one leg of the triangle to the other, and we're, so we're going to have to go through the mole. We talked about this earlier about how there were no direct connections, but I want to show you examples. So the first question says find the volume. So volume is not known. And I do know that I have 472 grams of CO2 at STP, CO2 gas. So I want to go from mass to mole. So I'm going to write down what I know, or mass to volume, sorry. I know I have 472 grams of CO2. And I know I'm going to need to convert that. So draw my bracket. And I know I don't want grams of CO2 or I wouldn't be doing this, but I can't go from mass directly to volume. I've got to stop off at the mole. And so how then do I find the mass of one mole of Cl2 or CO2? Excuse me. Well, I go to the periodic table. And the periodic table says that one carbon equals 12 grams. And it will also tell me that two oxygens equal 32 grams, and if I add those two pieces together, that's 44 grams. So there is 44 grams in every mole of CO2, and that does not get me where I want to be. That gets me to moles. So now I need another bracket, and I need to trade my one mole of CO2 for how much volume that mole occupies at STP. Well, we know any gas at STP is 22.4 liters for every mole. And so now I can wipe out my moles of CO2 and end in volume. And so if we run this calculation right quick, we'll see that 472 divided by 44 times 472 divided by 44 times 22.4 is about 240 liters. And so that much CO2 in mass would occupy 240 liters. And at the bottom, we want to know number of nitrogen atoms. So I'm looking at representative particles. How many comes from that volume at STP? So I'll start with what I know. Write down 35.2 liters of nitrogen, dinitrogen monoxide, excuse me. Draw a bracket. I don't want volume of N2O. What I want to know is atoms, but I can't go there directly. I'm going to have to go to moles. One mole of N2O at STP occupies 22.4 liters. Okay, that moves me out of volume into moles, not where I want to be yet. I still need to move from moles, so I need to cancel that. One mole of N2O is worth how many N2O units? Well. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd N2O molecules. That's the representative particle for N2O. It's a molecule. Oh, look, that still doesn't get me where I want to be. It gets me out of moles and into N2O molecules, but I don't want to be there. I want to be in N atoms. So for every one N2O molecule, I can see that I have two N atoms. Now, that's getting me where I want to be. Now, it's just a matter of doing the calculations. So if I take my 35.2 liters and divide it by 22.4, multiply the result of that by 6.02, and then again by 10 to the 23rd, and then also by 2, I'll see that I have about 1.9 times 10 to the 24th in atoms. And so again, just do your dimensional analysis. Start with what you know, work through your mole conversions until you get to what you ultimately want to have.